down here, Merc. Here we go, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, or at least the first chapter of it, on the PlayStation 4. Been waiting quite a while for this one, and, well, let's get right into it. Who in the hell? Hands where I can see them! Have fun. I had previously played a demo of this game on this channel, and that demo pretty much started at the point of Aerith, or Aerith, or I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call her. Probably go back and forth during all this. Uh, during the intro, where she's staring at the Mako light, and then she proceeds out into the road. Now, that's where the demo started, and in this one, well, it's uh, started a little bit earlier with some flashbacks, and here we are raiding the Mako Reactor, or Mako Reactor. That's another one I'm not sure how they really want that pronounced. I think in Advent Children they refer to it as Mako. I don't really care for Advent Children as a movie, or even as a continuation of the Final Fantasy VII story. It did continue with the story, but I think they kind of lost their balls with it, in a sense. But anyway, I don't want to talk about Advent Children. Here we have... The Final Fantasy VII Remake, the game we've been waiting for for so long, and a game which I played a couple of hours of it so far, and I have to say, I don't know, it's definitely going to keep going with it. And it's definitely adding a lot of more story to the game, and a lot of it is pretty good additions. Some of it, not so much. So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> this is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, uh, uh. Real joy to work with. Looks are what people notice first. Yes, I'm not on the same page as people. I'd say you're not even reading the same book. Enough. We're done here. Come on, nobody do something this crazy just for money. They may not think you're a true believer, but you know what I think? Not interested. What? <laughs> Which? Uh... You better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. I had expressed this during my playthrough of the demo, but I might as well repeat it here because I don't expect anyone to go back and watch that. This game has gone and put a little bit more effort, or actually quite a bit more effort, into trying to flesh out like individual aspects of the story, some of the side characters and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that was immediately obvious to me is they were putting some effort into giving you a reason why Cloud is taking part in this mission. The first time in the original game, it kind of seemed like Barrett should have been able to handle the situation on his own. Big, Wedge, and Jesse were, um, uh, Wedge and Jesse were, oh no, hold on, I got the names mixed up. <laughs> Biggs and Jesse were probably, the, the not the fat guy, <laughs> the two that aren't the fat guy, seemed physically capable enough. And you had Barrett, who was certainly capable of handling himself. And there was Tifa, who didn't even go on this mission. Should have been able to go and handle everything that they were going to go do here. 
They didn't need Cloud to guide them through the reactor. They didn't need him to unlock any doors. He was just there to fight. And he was just fighting alongside the other members of Avalanche. So it was a little weird. Like, what did, they, did they really need him there? In this game, they're really pushing the fact that like he's here in order to engage all the guards. They hide until he engages the guards, and then he runs. They run past the guards, and he fights them. Eventually, of course, Barrett's going to join the team, the battle team, and he'll be fighting alongside Cloud, but... Yeah, you know. This way. <laughs> Not so fast. We've got company. Just a little bit of background on the way that I am playing this. This is, of course, a PlayStation 4 version. There is a PC version that will be released that has not yet been released. So I'm playing this on the PS4. I got my copy a little bit late because I ordered it off of Amazon, and the COVID-19 is kind of fucking all that up. So I got it a few days late, but here I am, starting it late. But I'm going to get through it. But anyway, I'm playing this on a PlayStation 4, and I'm using Remote Play to cast the video to my PC, which is recording it, and then I'm going and putting the con commentary in after the fact. I kind of wanted to do a blind playthrough with it, which I am doing. It's an actually a blind playthrough, but my commentary is after the fact because I couldn't... I knew there was going to be long periods of time where I'm going to get lost, I'm going to run back in circles, or I'm going to end up dying a bunch of times, or some stupid garbage like that. Plus, it would have been more difficult with this recording setup to record the commentary and have it not sound like shit. So, during all the cutscenes where there's dialogue and all that kind of stuff, I return the game to full volume, and then otherwise, I lower the volume so my voice doesn't clash with it. Soldiers may attack on command, but I hear they make good guard dogs, too. Bet you've seen a few reactors. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako storage? <clears throat> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Or is he a loyal little dog? <clears throat> Have it your way, mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door open soon. In three, two... Damn, I'm good. Who's there? Door! Oh, wait! It's over! That's my line. So far, this game looks pretty damn good. I mean, I knew they weren't going to do anything truly groundbreaking. They're using the Unreal Engine here instead of whatever their own rather good-looking game engine they used for 15 was. But still, they managed to well, a pretty good-looking game here. It's a good thing I know someone who can get us the passcodes. <sighs> Pity no one else at command will talk to us, but what can you do? <sighs> and we're good. Careful in there. <clears throat> I got this place covered. Looks like the elevator's on another floor. Mind pushing that button? <laughs> so 
So, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? Tifa and I... Sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. <laughs> this pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you sit, it's here sucking up Mako! It doesn't rest, and it doesn't care! You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako <sighs> is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> Say that again! <sighs> I'd worry less about the planet, and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Our lives are on the line now. You listening, Merc? One false move. And that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some places a sword just can't reach. <laughs> just bear with him for me, would you? <sighs> yeah. Should have asked for more money. <laughs> Unfortunately, the recording quality of this playthrough is going to be a little bit lacking. The PlayStation 4 version, the standard version, which is what I'm playing, does display at a full 1080, 1920 by 1080, and it looks pretty damn good. Not 4K or anything, but it still looks pretty damn good. Unfortunately, since I don't have a PS4 Pro, I can't stream through remote play at a 1080p resolution to my computer, so it's got to go at uh, 1280 by 720. So well, the image is going to look a little bit soft, and of course I have to run it in Premiere so I can do this, my editing and all that kind of stuff, and then i got to send it out to YouTube, so... The end result is not going to look incredible, but it's going to get the... it's going to get the point across. Fortunately, there's not much I can do about that. So, hmm. Okay, and here we have Barrett joining the party, and... The way he plays this ga the game, uh, the way the game plays with Barrett is quite a bit different than it does with Cloud. And I imagine all the characters are going to have these pretty significant differences with the way that they handle in combat, which is a pretty big difference from the actual original Seven, which most of the characters were practically carbon copies of each other. There were minor differences between them, but they all controlled the same, and for the most part, 
they work the same. Look what we have here. A laser security system. Great. Those things will hurt more than your pride if you're careless. They'll cut you down to size and then some. But I'm guessing you've done this kind of thing before. Yeah. Figure out the timing of the lasers. Then, make a move when they cycle off. Exactly. I'll go first. Nothing like a little danger to get the blood pumping. Hey! Just keep those baby blues of yours on me! I'm not sure anymore how long the first Mega Reactor would end up taking a new player for this game. But an experienced player, someone who's played through it before and knows where to go and knows how to not fuck around with fights and all that kind of stuff, will get through the first reactor in a, maybe like 10 minutes or so. Speedrunners could probably do something crazy and do it faster. But that's, it wouldn't take long. This, they've beefed it up quite a bit. It's going to take like an hour, an hour and a half. Look. They don't call those things sweepers for nothing. They can wipe out a whole squad in seconds. Not if you wipe the floor with them first. This does feel like it's working out quite a bit better than a live commentary that I'd be providing. Because there are a lot of instances where characters are going to start just talking out of nowhere. And who's going to... <laughs> I've played games like that before, trying to do a live commentary like Mass Effect and all that kind of stuff. And it tends to be rather frustrating. I start a thought, and then I have to stop and let the characters talk. And I try to get back to it, and then they start talking again. So, this is just going to work out better. Okay, the Sweeper. Now, this was a... This was not a mini-boss in the original game. This was just a regular enemy that you encountered. If I remember correctly though the sweeper was actually the boss of this reactor in the demo of the original game so probably explained why it had a more of an elaborate design than most of the other things that you saw in the first reactor it was because it was perhaps originally supposed to be a boss but then they pushed it aside and turned it into a regular enemy and put the guard scorpion in which had an even more elaborate design this thing takes a beating but it does die. What are you? Twenty something? First. Huh? Soldier of first class. Doesn't go into the twenties. The hell are you talking about? I mean your age, not your goddamn rank. I uh <clears throat> though for all I know, a soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Barrett comes across as a little bit of a child. <laughs> of course this the way this character was portrayed in the original game was none too flattering on him either. Having played this game for a couple of hours before I record the commentary for this first episode, I do have to say they do do Barrett right. He's not quite the Mr. T ripoff that he was. That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Let's get down there. But he does get better treatment in this game than he did in the original game. We'll see what we mean in what I mean in like the second episode. He comes across as a much more of a charismatic leader, and you feel like there's a reason why he'd be the leader of Avalanche, or at least this Avalanche cell. Oh, no, it's bound to look a jacket. Scared, huh? <laughs> more like excited. I've been dreaming about this for years. Heads up, boys. The end of the fight. I leave the rest in your capable hands. Good luck. Oh, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. I also say that I do like the remixes of the original music in the game. Now, I consider the soundtrack for the original Final Fantasy VII to be one of the most iconic soundtracks and gaming history. Like, in fact, I had, a couple of years ago, I went and I listened to the soundtrack. I think it was on YouTube or something. And without looking at the screen and without without uh, reading the descriptions or anything, I was able to place where in the game probably every song was. Like, this one was in this town, this one was in this specific room, this one was when this character appeared, all that kind of stuff. 
when it come, came to any of the other Final Fantasy games, I cannot say the same. Because I tried, and I couldn't do it. You think if we fell in, we'd sink right down to the bottom? To the planet's core? No. The pump would suck us back up. <laughs> How come? Now, because of the audio, the music in the original game was so iconic. It's basically an open invitation for them to go and just fuck it up. Make some strange remix of the song that just punches me in the ears and I hate it all the way through. But they did a pretty subdued number of changes. They, of course, increased the quality of the audio. The PlayStation 1 had pretty good um, sample playback audio for its day. It did have the ability to do the PS1 had the ability to do Redbook audio, but you can't do Redbook audio all the way through a game that size. So a lot of it was that sample playback audio. And it sounded pretty good, but not as not good enough for modern day. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Right? Let's see if Little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Hmm. Go on. Do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are. That you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! Fine. What about the timer? Your call, Merc. Pretty cocky, ain't you? <gasps> you double crossing! Heads up! What in the hell? So I say they do a pretty good. I say they did a pretty good job of recreating the audio, recreating the feel of the audio. The original music was rather than just sort of copying its form. Now here we go. This is the Scorpion Sentinel instead of the Guard Scorpion. I don't know why they chose to change the name. It's possible that they. The original game had a whole lot of awkward translation errors that just kind of messed a lot of things up. And I'm sure once we reach points of these, where the translation errors were in the original, as long as I'm aware of them, I'll bring it up. But there are a lot of instances where characters would say something and it wouldn't be what it was intended to be said. And it could lead to some kind of weird confusion, like the character of Johnny in the original game was supposed to... Like, I don't know what the hell he was supposed to be, but he goes and makes a reference that he knew Tifa and he knew Cloud from Nibelheim. Like, he was one of the kids that lived there. And that was why uh, Tifa was attached to him. But uh, apparently he wasn't supposed to be there. There's some sort of a weird translation error. So I don't know what the story with Johnny is supposed to be. Pretty sure Johnny's in this game, though. So maybe we'll get a better idea. So, I'm just saying maybe the original name in Japanese, properly translated or more appropriately translated, would have been Scorpion Sentinel instead of Guard Scorpion. But in cases like that, I don't know. They could have named it either way. Probably if I were making the decision, I would have called it the Guard Scorpion just to keep it consistent with the Western release. Or at least the Western release of the remake being consistent with the Western release of the original. I wonder if all the bosses are going to be this elaborate as well. This thing isn't just in this sort of battle arena and jumping around and blowing shit up and, 
and knocking us around and jumping back and forth. It's crawling across the wall, going out of range and shooting missiles down. Changing uh, the way you have to fight the fight fairly often. So that's... It mixes things up. Of course, in the older Final Fantasy games with the turn-based systems, you have different phases of the fight where the enemies would use perhaps different tactics or they'd gain some kind of an immunity or they'd raise a barrier or who the hell knows. Do a bunch of different things like that. Now, with the modern technology we have, I guess they can go and make a much more elaborate version of that with um, this thing jumping all around and all that shit. I wonder if it's going to start to wear on me eventually, though, how long these fights take. Now, this fight would probably go a lot quicker if I had a better idea of how to play the game at this point. Like, I'm, for example, I'm diving behind the scorpion here, and I am just... I have a smoke alarm going off. I have to check it out. I wish I could say I knew what happened there. One of my smoke alarms went off. I went to check it out. No fire, nothing. Just, it's uh, malfunctioning. Brand new smoke alarm. Bought it like two weeks ago. And it's one of them sealed units too, so I can't remove the battery. I'm gonna have to just sort of break it to stop it from going off. And I gotta go get another one. Of course, where the hell am I gonna go get another one? All the fucking stores are closed. Ah. Uh, Son of a bitch. Okay, well, nothing I can do about it right now. Gotta kill the freaking scorpion sentinel. Man, this battle takes a long time. This episode's gonna be like an hour long just on account of being stuck in this fight for a long period of time. Well, anyway, what I was saying before was I'm going and running behind the scorpion and attacking it from behind because that is where the weak point is, or at least a point that I need to attack at that when it has a shield up. But, well, I'm kind of screwing something up because I'm not actually targeting the piece that I'm supposed to be attacking. So a lot of Cloud's attacks are hitting its legs and just not doing damage. Not doing significant damage. I'm also not dodging out of the way fast enough and avoiding damage. So, like, look at that. I took all those hits. Fuck him up. Actually doing some damage now. There's also all the extra abilities. I'm not using magic properly. I continued playing this game for two or three hours after this episode will have ended. So I got a better idea of how to play the game properly. So, <laughs> oh, Cloud's unconscious. Great. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking back at this now and I'm realizing, oh shit, I was being a dumbass the entire time. But anyway, I'm going to speed the gameplay up in order to get through the rest of this fight. And here we are speeding things along. I figure no one's really going to be watching my stuff to, as a guide, especially since this is a blind playthrough and fuck, I don't know how to get through or anything. I'm not going to do it any better than you will. So, <laughs> there's that. Love it when shit blows up. I guess the this phase of the fight, you knock the uh, shields off the front legs so you can damage it more directly like that. This end of the fight is actually a little bit easier than the other ones, I feel like. Well, I'm blowing shit up again. Look at that. Oh, wait, no, okay, now the shields are off the legs. Go too soon. It's not gonna go down easy. Focus! You focus, soldier boy! You ain't gotta worry about me missing my shot! This is gonna stay. And down goes another!
<laughs> you hear that? Damn thing showed you how it's done. Come on, we've got to move. Oh, shit's exploding early. Yeah, that was something that was completely lacking in the original game. You fled and you had a timer and all that kind of stuff. But there was no reason for a shit to be exploding around you. So it didn't happen. And always, I thought it was always strange we have these games with like a countdown to a self-destruct and stuff is exploding as you're trying to get away. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, is it going to explode in 19 minutes and 32 seconds or is it going to explode now? Well, in this case, the scorpion exploded and that makes some sense. something along these lines happened in the um, original game where Jessie got her leg stuck and Cloud had to sort of uh, help her out so she could escape. It happens a couple of times in this though. Overall though, I think the characterization of, of Jessie here is much better than it was in the original game. She didn't have much in the way of screen time so and all these other characters big Wedge, and jesse all them they get more attention in this we're running out of time shut up and climb you're not helping sorry it just it keeps me focused i'll freak out if i don't talk have it your way I've got you covered! Find us the way out of here! But then... Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've got Soldier Boy with me. X, Soldier Boy. They're here! It is plainly clear by the way the other characters, even Barrett himself, is acting. Is it just the first time any of these people have ever done anything like this? They are not the soldiers that Cloud is. They are not the experienced terrorists that they probably want to portray themselves as. You have these different characters like like um ah jeez. Either Biggs or Wedge <laughs> definitely seems out of place. Jesse's talking about like she's gotta keep talking or she's gonna freak out. So yeah, they're clearly not not they were not gonna succeed if Cloud didn't come along. In the original game, they definitely came across as more capable, during the mission at least, once they left and they got back to their base or they were on the train and all that, they came across like a bunch of idiots. And it was no wonder they got caught, they're running around talking about everything all the time, and Barrett's really loud and obvious. <laughs> and I guess that's where it sort of came through that they were inexperienced, they didn't know they had to keep their damn mouth shut, they had to have a low profile. In this, you're kind of seeing it during the initial mission. Being a little bit more consistent with the way that these characters acted and all that kind of stuff. They are not the... They are not what they think Cloud is. This thing went down a lot quicker this time. <laughs> Let's go. This place seems strangely large. I mean, a lot of hallways and rooms that don't seem to do anything. <laughs> moon drive. Mono drive. Not moon drive. 
Mono Drive. That's another of the enemy types that are returning from the original game. They weren't difficult to defeat in the original, and they're not difficult to beat now. And the lasers are down, so we don't have to worry about that. But they did leave their boxes open. That was nice of them. They uh, put them back. Now, the Shock Troopers, it's another enemy from the original game that they brought back for this. And the Shock Trooper is the first of the regular enemies. It sort of brings up the fact that you can't just attack and slash away from this game. These things dodge, they block, it'll take a lot of damage, but they're weak to magic. So if you know how to fight them, they're relatively easy. But if you don't, they're going to kick your ass. Sorry for your jump cut. And it's, this game is forcing you to kind of get used to the way it plays earlier on. Now, of course, the first mission in the original game, say, maybe would take you 20 minutes or so. So you get through that entire thing, and the entire thing is basically your novice mission, your introduction. This, if it's going to take an hour or an hour and a half or something like that, you're going to... The initial enemies on the way into the reactor are going to be your tutorials, and the enemies on the way out are going to be deep enough into the game that they can start ramping up the difficulty. So that's probably what we're seeing here. These things make an appearance. It's ramping up the difficulty, making it a little bit harder. Kind of backwards in terms of the way normal game design works, where your first mission end-to-end -end is going to be just crazy easy, because you got to let the player get used to things. This game doesn't really give you a minute to rest and a minute to think about what's going on. You just action, 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 and it's ramping up the difficulty. So that's a little bit strange, but it doesn't get... I, I, I can imagine this tripping somebody up, and that person might get really pissed off. But I guess uh, I kind of expected this. Plus, I did play the demo, and this happened in the demo, so... I still got to sort out. The fight's not over yet, so I can't go through the door. Come on, Barrett, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> one more? Yeah, there's one more. Eh, no, nope, Barrett got that one. Just open the door, buddy. Take that as a yes. Okay, that was pretty cool. All right, come on. <laughs> 